you back. All right, thank you very much. I'm Ken Angles. I've come here to be with you from Wales. And, I wa <laughs> and uh, what I've got to say is there's been a lot, a lot of talk in the media, hasn't there, about garden parties, garden parties. And this is really a cloak of cover for something more dastardly that's happening in here tonight. And that is the removal of all our democratic right to peaceful protest. And that peaceful protest through history has been an agent of change uh, th throughout uh, uh, history, as I say. Whether it's the suffragettes, whether it's peace campaigners, whether it's climate change protesters, whether it's people who want to stay in the EU, or whether it's the right of trade unions to protest. This is fundamental to our democratic process. And I don't know where the trade union movement is, actually, because, frankly, this bill would destroy the right to pick it as well. And it's good that we're here in so many numbers because this campaign needs to go on and on and on. The truth is that what this bill actually says is that if there is a prospect of inconvenience, of noise, disturbance, business continuity, the police should have the right and indeed the duty and the power to intervene to stop it. And that means in terms of uh, businesses and pickets, they can just move straight in. So we need to stop that. I chair the All Party Group on Democracy and Constitution and we looked at a, a report on what happened in Clapham in terms of Sarah Everard, in terms of the protests against this bill in Bristol. And what, as you'll expect, we found was that the police's action there was disproportionate in intervening, undermined uh, public health in the case of Sarah Everard, in a, in a vigil that after all was put, was put together to actually mourn the death of someone who'd been murdered tragically by a police officer. In the case of Bristol, Again, obviously the police are supposed to be there to protect property and life. What this bill would do is to give them the power to intervene and disperse people just for having a protest. And they overreacted in that case. There were cases of blading, using uh, shields to hit uh, protesters who were sat on the ground. And we found that was disproportionate. And we believe that the police should go back to their founding principles of Robert Peel, which is the police is part of the community, the community is part of the police, it's about consent. It is not an executive arm of an authoritarian regime to infringe upon our democracy. <laughs> and what we want in that bill, obviously the best thing that can happen in that bill is to, to throw it in the dustbin of history. But minimally, what we've done is to move an amendment to say that there should be a duty on the police to facilitate police uh, to facilitate peaceful protest as part of our democracy the police should be part of the agents of democracy not part of the oppression of democracy <laughs> and let me be clear the police officers i've spoken to in swansea agree with me they don't want to be stopping people peacefully protesting they don't want to be thrust uh, forward in, in the line of the interest of an authoritarian uh, regime. And finally, I would just say this. People will have heard of Anirin Bevan, the founder of the health service. Anirin Bevan said that what happens in politics is there's a struggle between property and the interests of property and poverty. And during that, property will attack democracy because democracy is the only way that we can have the what we need and what we want. And as millions of people are going hungry, as millions of people can't pay their bills, as half a million people are now, uh, less people are working, we need to be going out, protesting, voting and getting mobilised. But in fact, what's happening is this bill is to stop democracy alongside making people have ID to vote. So democracy is actually being destroyed and we need to defend democracy to defend the people. So I'm with you. Let's do it. Let's stop this bill.